You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Have you ever tried to reach success only to keep falling down again and again? Welcome to Energetic Magic with your host, Shiraz. Shiraz is here to discuss the different ways our belief systems and the stories we tell ourselves create the reality we live in. Listen as Shiraz removes your limiting beliefs and changes your reality. So now, please welcome the host of Energetic Magic, Shiraz. Welcome to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I am Shiraz, and this week we are talking about image. And as always, if you have any blocks, limiting beliefs you want to clear, the number to call is 1-866-451-1451. So for, you, those, for those of you new to the show, I am an energy facilitator and belief shifter. And what this means is I help people to discover the unconscious beliefs they have and shift them out of their system. So I've discovered that your beliefs create your reality and your entire reality around you. And if your reality isn't the one you like, that's because most of your beliefs are occurring at a subconscious level. So while consciously you may think you want more money or you want a better love life or you don't have the perfect body, at a subconscious level, everything is great. So I have conversations with the callers and talk about some of the experiences I've had to show you how you can find a belief and realize that that's there, even though you may not think it's there or it may not look like a belief you think you have, and then have you get rid of that belief. And so what happens is if we discover a belief, I'll ask, are you willing to destroy the belief? It's that simple. And if you say yes, and you mean it, then the belief shifts. And when that happens energetically for people out there, you may feel some things happening. You may not, but most commonly people can feel lighter and happier. Some people will have a physical sensation of maybe yawning or getting hotter or colder, um, feeling stuff going on in your body. For me, when energy moves for the person I'm talking to or the listeners in general, I will either yawn or start coughing. The Basically, the more intense and the more you're hanging on to something, that causes me to cough. If energy just moves nicely and smoothly, then I end up yawning. If you ever hear me say, ow, it's because someone's putting out energetic resistance to what we're trying to move. I may also ask, are you willing to step out of the story? So stories are things in our lives that happen over and over again. So things like I can never get ahead or I always meet the wrong person. Uh, anytime you're, you find yourself telling the same story over and over again, that's because you're creating that story over and over again. And even if the story sucks, the reason you create it is because when it happens, you get to be right. And as human beings, a lot of us prefer to be right than to be happy or to be rich or to be in a wonderful relationship. Being right trumps all that stuff for a lot of people. So... That's what's going to happen. And as I said, we're talking about image today. There's two big categories of image. First of all, the image we want to portray out to the world, and then the self-image we have um, that causes a lot of problems for us if we don't have a wonderful self-image. So in one of the classes I taught recently, the overall theme was that no one was in acceptance of themselves as they were right now. And yes, we want to improve ourselves. Yes, we want to remove our current blocks and limitations. Yes, we're not perfect in this current incarnation of ourselves. But we need to be in acceptance of who we are and where we are in this moment. Hating that, judging that, that all creates resistance. It actually makes it more difficult to change when you're not accepting of yourself how you are. 
So again, this doesn't mean you want to stop changing who you are, but where who you are in this moment, be in acceptance of it. So also take note of where you are now and how much has changed. Okay, look at even the small accomplishments. I mean, it's it may not be that perfect life, but you've been through a lot in your life. You can look at all the things where it looked horrible and you got through it. You can look at all the challenges you've gotten over, all the accomplishments you made. I was talking to a friend recently and uh, she was complaining how she was still stuck in the same story and unable to change it. And I had to remind her that she's got hundreds of stories running and she's just focused on the one she hates. So that's not moving. Because the more you focus on something, the more you create of it or the more you anchor it in. So if you're focused on something like, I don't have enough money, then the prevalent thought there is not enough money and you keep creating not enough money. So that's why you get people, you know, trying to get out of debt, they're focused on debt. Um, Always saying, I don't have, uh, I can never find the right partner. So you never find the right partner. That's you just focused on the thing that's wrong. And here she was with all these wonderful things going on in her life, but she's just focused on this, this thing that she's stuck on. Right. And in that same conversation, she told me about four other big shifts she's had in her life. I will, I would consider them big, but for her, she was just sort of dismissive and just sort of mentioning it. And when I pointed out uh, those other stories, she finally clicked and she went, oh my God, I didn't even think of those as stories. I just thought, you know, that's just something that happened. But the realization helped to shift things for even further. So again, this is not about staying where you are and not changing. This is about acceptance. Instead of I am that I am, perhaps we should think I am that I am as I am. Don't be frustrated with yourself. Acknowledge where you are and then shift a bit more. Then acknowledge that and then shift a bit more. Remember the shifts don't have to be in one area. Sometimes other things need to shift before you can move the thing you can, can you consider is stuck. So the big thing here is to love yourself. And if you are stuck in an area, Sometimes what you need to do is just stop thinking about that area entirely because you're so caught up in the stuckness of that that you're you're locking it in and you're missing all these other good things. And if you shift over to the other good things and get your attention off that stuckness, then that stuckness has a chance to move and you can come back to it later and realize it's moved. And sometimes I've found with people is they um, they don't realize just how much it's moved or Um, they're surprised when things are put into perspective. So for instance, I had uh, a client I was working with and one of her big complaints was uh, her fighting with her dad. And she said, every single day we get into a fight. And it's just, it's really annoying. It's frustrating. I love my dad, but I don't want to keep fighting with him. And so we started looking at that and we started clearing some blocks on that. And then we went on to clear some other things that were going on in her life. And then uh, a month later, we had another appointment and she, we were working on some, some different things. And then I, I thought, oh, how's, how are things with your dad? And she said, oh, they've changed a little bit. And I said, oh, a little bit. So what's happening? She goes, well, you know, we're still fighting about once a week. And I said, you were fighting every day. And she's like, yeah. So that's like one seventh of the month you were fighting. That's quite a big difference. And she's like, oh, I never thought of it that way. And sometimes we don't, we don't realize how much we've changed because we're still a bit stuck in that. Well, she was still stuck in that I fight with my dad. Now, how much she fought with her dad had changed, but she was still looking at I fight with my dad. So, okay, that actually caused some shifts for people. So, are you willing to destroy the belief that the best way to solve a problem is to completely focus on that problem? Ooh, okay. That's causing some shifts out there. So we're going to continue with image when we come back from the break. So this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we'll be right back. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. 
Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I am Shiraz, and we're talking about image. And if you have any questions, particular problem you'd like to discuss, the number to call is 1-866-451-1451. So the big thing with image, of course, is what other people think of us. Okay? Some people are only happy when other people hear and acknowledge them as successful or a good person or insert what you love here right and the problem on and that is that if you need other people to have the right opinion of you for you to be happy then you're giving all the control of your happiness to everyone else okay so this stops up a lot of people everyone's worried about how's it going to look how am i going to look what will people think about what i've chosen as a career or who i've chosen as a partner or where i've chosen to live and as long as you're stuck in that place of worrying about what everyone else thinks, you are either going to get stuck or really slow down in your life. So as harsh as it sounds, you have to not give a crap what anyone thinks of you and your life. And uh, that can be hard for some people because some people love to be admired, be adored, be complimented. And, you know, that does feel good. But if you're functioning to just get that response. Again, you're not functioning to actually be happy for yourself. You're, fu- you're at the whim of everyone else. So what you want to do is figure out what you want, who you want, where you want to be, and then move towards those things. So when you start to change and shift and go after the things you want, what happens a lot of the time? is other people get uncomfortable because you have been you for so long that when you start to change, they're like, well, who is this person? This isn't the person I'm used to. So they will try their best to get you to being who they were used to, not who you want to be. And this may not be, you know, out of malice, although sometimes it can be, but it's just everyone likes to be comfortable. Everyone's got their world in which they're comfortable. And when people in your world start to change, (coughs) excuse me, start to change, and you start to get uncomfortable, you're like, okay, now, how do I adjust this? So you have to uh, let them get comfortable with you all over again. And yes, some people will not get comfortable with you as you change, um, and they may end up slipping out of your life, but other people that are in line with where you're going and what you're doing will start to show up. So if you have decided that you can't live without certain people, then you actually have stuck yourself 
in a certain place if those people don't agree with your choices. So this is one of the hardest things. And, uh, and we just taught the uh, Energetic Magic Level 1 class. And one of the lessons in that is uh, be willing to let go of anyone or anything holding you back or keeping you stuck. And that's no matter who it is. And I know that's a tough one to hear, but sometimes the people we love the most are keeping us stuck the most. And while I'm not advocating you abandon everyone in your life, the way it works is when you are willing to leave behind anyone and anything, what tends to happen is you don't have to, for the most part. A lot of people just end up coming along with you. But it's that willingness that's required. So, whew, yeah, some people are having issues with that. So are you willing to destroy the belief that there are certain people in your life you're not allowed to leave behind as you grow? Ow, lots of resistance from some people. <coughs> Ooh, there we go. Some things are moving. The big thing that's coming up for people is kids. I can't leave my kids behind. Well, when they're young, of course, you're going to take care of your kids. But as they get older, if you're still on your path and growing and they're able to take care of themselves, then you can make that choice. And hopefully they'll stay in your life and come along for the ride and everything is going to be great. But if you think there's no way I can ever leave these kids, even though, and this is where, what it can come down to, even though they completely agree, disagree with what I want to do and where I want my life to go, I'm not going to leave them behind and I'm going to have to stay with them and put those things on hold until I can convince them that what I want to do is a good thing to do. Then you've just stuck yourself because what if you can never convince them? Then those things you want to accomplish, you can never get to. And yes, they're your kids and you love them very much, but you can still move on and do the things you want and still love them. Right? They may get upset with you, they may be angry with you, but that doesn't stop you from loving them. The important thing is, are you happy? All the decisions you make, the growth that you go through, the things you choose to do should be moving you to a path of greater happiness. And for you, first and foremost, for your family, sure, you want to do that too. and But they still have to come second. Right? They may be a very, very close second, like on a scale of one to 100, you may be at 100%, I'm here for me, and they can be at 99, so it's like really close, but you still got to be a little bit ahead. So think of it like um, when you're on an airplane and you've got a little kid next to you and the oxygen mask drop down, the instruction is put the oxygen mask on you first and then the kid. Why? Because if you don't take care of you first, you may not be able to take care of that kid. This applies to a whole bunch of areas in your life. If you don't take care of your happiness, if you don't take care of your health, if you don't take care of your success first, then you may not be in a position to take care of everyone else. Because think about it. If you don't take care of your health first and you're putting your kids' health second, and I'm not saying stop taking care of your kids, but I'm saying put you at that 100 and the kids at 99 so that because if you put your, your kids at 100 and you're down the line, because no one ever puts themselves at 99 when they start putting people ahead, they, they drop further and further down, um, then you start to get sick. And then the kids need to be taken care of, and you can't because you're sick. So how does that help anyone? So this is what I'm talking about. Ooh, there we go. That's helping people to shift. Good. So are you willing to destroy the belief that you should put others before yourself? <laughs> I know it sounds bad, but think of it in the context I just said. That's better. Now people are moving. Ooh. Okay. So we're going to continue talking about image. When we get back from the break, so this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we'll be right back. 
For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305 705 3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I am Shiraz, and we're talking about image. Remember, if you have any questions or any beliefs or blocks you want clear, the number to call is 1-866-451-1451. So, going along with image, we have another thing that I talked about earlier about being right and being acknowledged as being right. And while it's wonderful to be right, when you have to be right all the time, that's going to cause a problem. When you have to win an argument, when pe- people have to see your point, then you're going into this ego place. Remember that some people aren't ready to see your point, even if it's the right point. They're too wrapped up in their own beliefs and their own stories. And sorry, but sometimes you are wrong. And uh, you may be wrapped up in your own beliefs and your own stories to acknowledge that. So when you're ready to destroy the need to be right and destroy the need to be understood, then you can really start to shift things in your life. Now, being right is great. Being understood is great. But it's that need part that gets you out of alignment and into ego. Okay, If you're fine, whether or not you're right, you can move into flow with the universe. And who, I mean, who doesn't love to love to win an argument? But whew, people are reacting to that. A lot of people here love to be right. So here's the thing about being right. What if being wrong had greater value to you? Right? And that may not seem to make sense, but think about the stories that you may be running. Like uh, you don't know, you don't make enough money or you never meet the right person. So what if that story, I never I never make enough money, I can't make enough money, I can't find ways to make enough money. What if instead of being right about that story, you were wrong and money started to show up and opportunities started to show up? What if you say, I, I never meet the right person and you were wrong about that and the perfect partner shows up in your life? Right? What if you're ill and you say, and you say, I'm stuck with this illness, it's a chronic thing or it's a genetic thing and I'll never be able to escape it. What if you're wrong about that? So it's a lot of ways that being wrong can serve you if you're willing to be wrong. But when you are stuck in that need to be right, it's going to affect a lot in your life. And it's going to affect your relationships with other people. We're talking about image. You know, you know those people out there that always have to be right. And what do you think of them? And if you start looking at all the times you have to be right, then your subconscious doesn't really distinguish uh, between you and everyone else when it comes to judgment. So if you 
are in judgment of all these other people that love to be right and they annoy you, then at a subconscious level, whenever you're trying to be right for the sake of being right, you are annoyed with yourself. Think about that. Whew, yeah, a lot of people are thinking about that. That's bringing up some stuff. Wow. Okay. So this is also also comes to image in a different way. So this is how you prevent yourself from having the wrong image in your opinion. And it's an important lesson here because uh, let's look at it from the point of jealousy. So when you want something, but you don't have it, and you go into jealousy or resentment of the people who already have it, you're actually keeping that thing from coming to you, right? So how, how does that work? And that you're looking at these people and you're resenting them. You don't like them because they have the thing. And of course, your subconscious doesn't distinguish with these them versus you. So if you don't like people who have the thing that you've been at saying you want, then if you were to have that, you wouldn't like yourself because you'd be one of the people that have the thing that you want, right? And it seems a little, little weird, but that's how our subconscious works. So because you don't like these people and you don't want to become a person you don't like, at a subconscious level, you're going to keep yourself from getting that thing that consciously you say you want, right? And you know, some of you are trying to wrap your heads around that, but let that sink in. So if you, let's say, look at rich people and you think rich people are greedy or rich people are self-centered or rich people uh, take advantage of other people, then you're going to do everything you can not to be rich because you don't want to be greedy or self-centered or take care, uh, advantage of other people. So you have to look at it that way. So this whole thing about image and the image you want plays into what you can have. So we might have to do a clearing directly on that. Whew, that's bringing up so much right now. Okay, so yes, you can see some rich people that do that, but not all rich people are, do that. And it may seem like a lot of them do that or, or, or all or most of them do that, but that's because the rich people that are going about their business doing good and helping people and being generous don't make the news as much as the people that are screwing everyone over. Because, you know, that's the way our news system is set up. It's more about the bad news than the good news. So there's all these people with lots of money that are just going about their lives, helping people, being great people, and, you know, making friends and, and contributing to charities and all that. And they're out there, but you don't see them. So are you willing to destroy the belief that all rich people are greedy? <laughs> are you willing to destroy the belief that rich people take advantage of other people? <laughs> are you willing to destroy the belief that rich people are snobs? Ooh, okay. Didn't think we go specifically into money, but here we are. We're just going to follow the energy. And don't worry about getting money and that money changing you. Uh, because what happens when you get money is it doesn't really corrupt you. What it does is it allows you to be more of who you are. So if you were a jerk... And now you get more money, you become a bigger jerk. If you are a great person and you get more money, you become an even greater person. That's how it works. But why it looks like money corrupts a lot of people is that when you are struggling and you don't have money, even if you're a jerk, you try to behave nicely to get along with other people so you can keep your job and keep that circle of friends you have. And you know, just make sure there's that certain image there. But when you get the money, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You get freed and you can say, I can, I'm just going to do whatever I want because I have money. And so all the secret jerks that were pretending to be nice start becoming big jerks. And that's why you see that effect of 
money basically corrupting people. But um, there's very few people that are pretending to be jerks that are actually nice and waiting for money to show up so they can be, actually become nice. That's a very rare thing out there. Whew. So we're going to talk more about how image is affecting your life when we come back from the break. So this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we'll be right back. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Shiraz, and we are talking about image. And remember, if you have any questions or beliefs or blocks you want cleared, the number to call is 1-866-451-1451. So before the break, we were talking about jealousy and how it can affect your life. So when you see people that have the things you want, what you want to do is get to a place where you're not jealous and you can honestly go into a good feeling and saying, basically get to a point where um, other people have it, so I know it's attainable, and I know I'm going to get that as well. And the fact that I'm seeing it means I'm aligning to it and that it's already showing up in my life. That's an important one. Because remember, that when you start to focus on something, it starts to show up more in your life. Now, it may not show up for you, but the fact that it's showing up is a good thing because it means you're getting closer and closer to it. So think about um, like if you want to go out and buy a new car and you decide you want to get, uh, say, a Toyota Corolla. And all of a sudden you start to notice how many Toyota Corollas are out there. And they, you didn't see them before because your focus wasn't on them. But now that you're thinking about that particular car, it starts to show up. So. This is a good thing when you want something and you start to see more and more people having it. It means your thoughts are on it and you are moving closer to it. So you just have to look for signs and steps to take to bring that into your life. Okay. Uh, Frustration at not having something keeps you from having it. So it's time to let it all go. It's time to be happy for every person that figured out how to align with what you want and for you to join them in line as well. Then watch how quickly those things start to show up in your life. But, wow, okay, things are shifting there. But jealousy of a thing directly affects our image because we're not going to get that, even though that's the image we have of what we want. There we go. So... Another thing that comes up with image is the self-image of it's me against the world. And a lot of us have that thought that 
you're up against the world. But when you learn how the universe works, you realize the opposite is, tr is true. The world, the universe supports you all the time. So, but if your image is, it's me against the world, then you're actually sending the thought out there that world, universe, send some things out after me to give me challenge, to oppose me, to stop me from doing what I want, because it's me against the world. If you want to choose to step into reality of me in harmony with the world, then you can start creating some amazing results. And whew, so what's coming up for a lot of people is that, um, that fantasy, that romanticism of me against the world, that epic struggle, that when you get through it and get your accomplishment, it's so much sweeter when you fought hard and been through all, all these crazy challenges and hardships and now finally have it. And while there is, there is a certain sweetness to having gone through a trial and accomplished it, you don't have to put that much hardship in your life to still feel satisfaction. Technically, you don't have to put any hardship in your life. Uh, but whew, there's no reason to purposely add more crap to what's already going to show up. Because just as a process of growing, things are going to show up for you for you to work through and challenge. But that me against the world belief system just ups the ante. So paranoia is when you believe everyone's out to get you. I used to talk about reverse paranoia, but apparently people are calling it pro-noia now. And that is when you believe that everyone is out to help you. Now, which would you rather practice? Okay. So are you willing to destroy the belief that it's you against the world? Good. <laughs> Are you willing to destroy the belief that everyone is trying to stop you from achieving success? Ooh, ooh. Wow, it's big for a lot of people out there. Good. All right. Okay, so the next thing I want to look at is being prepared. So this comes up to the image of how competent you are and how wise and skillful you are when you're moving out there in the world. So a lot of people don't want to look like idiots when they're doing something. So they have to make sure everything is perfect and they've got everything lined up and com they're completely prepared before they start doing what they want to do. And as a result, a lot of people don't even get started. So one of the analogies I, I love to use is some people don't want to get going um, as though they are in a car in their driveway and they have to drive to the other side of the city. And they're not going to leave until they know that on that journey, every traffic light is green when they get to it. Now, while that is possible, it's very, very small possibility, especially depending on the size of the city, that's not a practical thing to do. You're just going to leave the driveway. You're going to go there. You're going to hit a stoplight. You're going to sit there and wait for it to change. You might have hit detours or constructions. Right? There's going to be things that come up as you drive. And you have to approach the rest of your life like this as well. So, and you can even think about it as, as if you're driving, if you're driving to some, some other place in the city and you hit a stoplight, there's nothing embarrassing about it. You just hit a stoplight and you have to deal with it and wait for it to change. If you're trying to create a business and you've got a whole bunch of things set up and then you start going, even though you don't have everything ready, you're going to hit some stoplights. And then you just have to deal with that issue, that problem, which is that stoplight, so you can continue on the road. And... Trust me, I've talked to a lot of successful people and a lot of them have a plan or had a plan. And if you ask them, did everything go according to plan when you went from not having success to having this wonderful success, there's not one of them will say, oh yeah, it went perfect, no problems at all. 
So, whew, okay, that's bringing some stuff up. So we're going to do a little bit of clearing around that when we come back from the break. So this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we'll be right back. Hello, everybody. This is Coach Betty Louise, and I have a question for you. When is the last time you looked in the mirror and saw your amazing beauty and sexuality? 80% of women do not have a positive body image. 97% of women do not like something about their bodies, and over 10 million women have eating disorders. In addition, at least 40% of women are sexually repressed, and one in seven marriages are sexless. I've just completed a book called Healing with Pleasure Medicine. What I will teach you is what gets in the way of your ability to see your beauty, sensuality, and sexuality. How to shift your perception to increase pleasure throughout your entire day. Okay, the place to find all of this information is CoachBettyLive.com. One more time, CoachBettyLive.com. Look forward to connecting. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I am Shiraz, and we've been talking about image. And remember, if you have any questions or any beliefs or blocks you want to work on, the number is 1-866-451-1451. So we're talking about being prepared and how a lot of people want to make sure everything is perfect before they start. Whew. So are you willing to destroy the belief that you cannot start until you are sure you will succeed? <laughs> are you willing to destroy the belief that you should not do anything when there's a chance that you will look silly or stupid or incompetent or an idiot when you're doing it? Ooh, wow. So when you start to not give a crap what anyone thinks and you start doing your thing, it's amazing how things show up and how easy things become. And one one of my favorite stories is when I went to Japan. So I had graduated from college and gotten a job and it was a really good job. And, uh, you know, major corporation, full benefits package and bonuses, stock options, the whole thing. But then I found out that my the classes graduating after me at my college was going was going to do a co-op uh, term in Japan. And I've been wanting to go to Japan since I was 12 years old. So most people would think, oh, wow, I just missed that opportunity to go to Japan by, by one school term. And, oh, uh, well, too bad. But I was never one to just sort of look at how things are and accept them. So I said, well, I'm going to go with that class to Japan. And so then my, my teacher, I went to my teacher and I said, listen, I want to go with that class. And he looked at me, he goes, you just graduated. And I said, yeah, but I want to be on that trip. And he'd gotten to know me in, in the, the three years I was there at the college. And so he just shook his head and he's like, yeah, if it was anyone else, but I know you, you don't work like everyone else. So this is what's going to happen. You need to have a certain level of Japanese. And I said, I'm going to take that in night school. And 
we're not going to pay for you because you already graduated, so you have to take care of your own flight. I said, well, I've got a good job now. I can take care of that. So you'll be put up in uh, the dorm rooms there. You'll be assigned a job, and you're going to have to worry about everything else. And I said, fine, good, done. And the people in my life were looked at me and went, are you insane? Right? And here's the whole image thing. You have a great job. You want to go do an internship in Japan? And they're like, how much are you going to get paid for that in- internship? I said, $1,000 a month. And they're like, oh, my God. <laughs> so uh, a lot less than what I was what I was currently getting. And and they said, you're just going to quit your job. Like you, at, By the time I leave, it would have been one year at the job. And they said, you just, after a year at an amazing job that a lot of people would kill to have, you're just going to quit. I'm like, yes, that's what I'm going to do. But this is what I want to do. This is what I'm being pulled to do. This is where my happiness is taking me. So despite everyone telling me it was a bad idea, it was irresponsible, it was a silly idea, because I felt that pull so strong, because that happiness was there in such a big way, I went and I did it anyway. And I had an amazing time. The, the experience went so well, it was a four-month four, four month co-op term that I managed to extend my, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my pass there and get it out to six months. And uh, I would, you know, I would never have traded that experience for anything. But then when I got back, I was still in that energy of happiness. I was still in that energy of I'm doing what I love in my life. And I actually went and had lunch with my old boss because we had become friends in the year I was working at the company. And during lunch, she said, hey, how would you like your old job back with a raise and a promotion? I'm like, yeah, I can do that. I will do that. And everyone there was shaking their heads. Like, how did he pull that off? And this is the thing. It is being in that energy of happiness, the energy that everything's going to go right, that pulls in the results. But if you give in to what everyone thinks is best for you, If you go into worrying about that and your image, then you're going to start denying yourself all sorts of amazing adventures, experiences, opportunities, um, even love, money, all these different things. You know what's best for you. A lot of times you're going to make these weird, bad decisions because you're being pulled by other people's stories and other people's opinions. And sometimes you're just going to be in a place where you're functioning out of fear and out of these uh, limiting beliefs, so that's going to cause other bad decisions. But deep down, you know what you want. When you're willing to step out of the fear, step out of the place of safety and move towards what you're pulled to do, then each decision is going to bring you closer to it and it's going to bring it to you in a wonderful way. Now, sometimes you have to go through a bad experience to get there, but it will ultimately, when you're following your intuition, you're following your dreams, you're following your passion, you will get there. And so example of sometimes it takes you in a bad place. All right, one of my friends had finally made that decision that she wanted someone really special in her life. And so she was following that energy to find that special person. And uh, so she ended up dating this guy. And then she was telling me about it. And she's like, I don't know why I'm dating this guy. I got, a, I got pulled to date him. But he's not that great a guy. He's kind of a jerk. And now that he has me, he actually wants to spend more time with his friends because it's I'm more of like this trophy. And uh, but as a result, she started meeting his friends. And one the guy's best friend was dating this other girl. And she and the other girl hit it off and they became best friends. And then they both dumped their boyfriends. So she was looking for someone special in her life and she found it in a new best friend. But she had to go through the jerk of a boyfriend to get to that person who was the best friend. So at the beginning, it looked like her intuition screwed her over, but it didn't. She just had to look at the bigger picture and make that connection to get to where she wanted. Whew, good. Some people are relating to that in big ways. That's great. Okay. So are you willing to destroy the belief that you have to make your decisions so you don't look bad. (sighs) (sighs) Good. 
Okay, we're going to let that energy process for a while and take a break. So this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we'll be right back. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted. And every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope. There is help there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I am Shiraz, and we have been talking about image. So the last thing I want to talk, uh, chat about here is emotions. So there's a whole thing around image and emotions, and we want to express certain emotions in public. We want to have a look a different different way in public, and sometimes we're taught to suppress our emotions. Men especially are taught that it's not manly to be emotional. However, when emotions come up and we don't address them, they don't just go away. They can build up to be released in an outburst at a later date and through sometimes the most innocuous things like someone leaves the cap off the toothpaste and then you just completely freak out and scream at them. And you're not screaming about the cap of the toothpaste, you're screaming about all these other things that you didn't want to talk about that you've been suppressing and now they're finally out. Or if you suppress the emotions, they can actually fester inside you because they are energy and they will eventually start to present as illness. So it can be um, a... Oof, I'm sorry. I usually just start rattling them off and I'm going blank for a sec. So it could be that you've got digestive problems. It could be that you end up with an illness like colon cancer. It could be because a lot of times we, we think we, we push down the emotions. We push down the emotions. So the problems tend to happen in that, that lower area of us. And uh, and it's all from this this refusal to be with our emotions and experience our emotions. So... Uh, you have to be willing to have those emotions. We're humans. We're designed to have emotions. And I know they can feel scary and even overwhelming. But when you let them in and you be with them, when you look at them, then you can start to understand them better, why you're having them, how they're affecting you, where it's coming from. Because sometimes it's not just a straightforward, this person upset me and that's why I'm feeling really, really sad. It could be that there's all the sadness from childhood that you haven't got. So when someone affects you, it, it's a bigger sadness than you expect. So it can feel scary and overwhelming, but when you, you're you in them, it, it helps when you're, you're looking at them, it helps you to let them go. It gets easier to let them pass. Emotions process faster when you're not in resistance to them and when you're more in observation of them. So... Sure, you may not want to release them all over the people you're with if that's when they come up, but you can still find a time and place to release them. Uh, you have feelings, so deal with it. But uh, I've seen 
a lot of times with people that have been suppressing their emotions going into this place of illness. We actually had uh, one person in one of the workshops, a hugely distended stomach and a hernia on top of that, all from emotional suppression. And uh, he had a huge, huge shift when he finally, we broke through and made him realize he can express his emotions, that it's not a bad thing because he was, he had military training as well, where they're just like suck it up and take it. And he was trying to portray the certain image and he finally let go of that image and uh, was able to relate to us in a different way. And it changed a lot in his world. So think about how you're trying to look and how you're trying to be perceived. And is there an image and that's just you. Like, what if the image was just you being you and uh, not worrying about it? How would that feel? So coming up this month, we have the 25-day program. Uh, this month, the theme is tapping into spirit and intuition. So I'm going to be working on the energy of the group for 25 days straight. And there will be two live coaching calls for two hours each. Details are on my website, www.energeticmagic.com. So have a look. Also this month, we're doing a full day course called Chakra Magic, where we're going to be clearing out the chakras, spending almost an hour on each one. So it's an all day course. We've done it before and the reviews were really great, including one person saying, let's do this every month. And finally, we're going to, I'm doing a new two hour workshop. I haven't done this before, but I've been getting lots of requests for it. And I'll be doing a full day version of it later on this year. Uh, this is on health, weight and aging and how to affect all of them. Uh, it's going to be a, a fun class and we're going to be destroying all these beliefs on uh, why you don't look or feel or um, are being the way you want to be. So uh, thank you for tuning in. I hope you got something out of this and I will not be here next week, but we'll return the week after. So this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM, <laughs> the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio saying be well, be aware and be magical. You've been listening to Energetic Magic with your host, Shiraz. What if by changing the beliefs that you don't even realize you have, you could create magic in your life? Listen each week as Shiraz will help you identify and remove those subconscious beliefs, releasing the hold they have on you here on Energetic Magic. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company